Hi, I'm Fran Palmieri. I'm Director of Oncology Strategic Sites for Sarah Cannon. So let's talk a little bit about clinical trials and particularly clinical research treatment trials in the United States. It's, it's a really interesting thought to think that 83% of patients that are diagnosed with any kind of cancer would prefer to be on a clinical trial, which tells us that persons truly understand the need for research and advancing therapies for patients doing something better than what we've done. But the prevalent statistics tell us about 3% of those patients actually do participate in a clinical trial. We can do a whole lot better than that. We know that clinical trials can make a huge impact. Some of our diseases we've cured through clinical trials. And actually, every treatment we have has its basis in clinical trials. So we would love to see that number of participating patients increase significantly. There are definitely barriers to participating in a clinical trial. I think that all of the barriers can be overcome by education. I think when you're diagnosed with cancer, there's a lot of fear. My patients have told me over and over again, it's just overwhelming the decisions that have to be made once they're told that cancer diagnosis. So to imagine receiving that diagnosis and then being told, and I need to know immediately when you'd like to be scheduled for surgery, when you want to come for your treatment, there are a lot of options. But the good news with that is that you're seeing a physician that is a specialist in cancer care. And they can help you make those decisions. They can talk through all of the options. And we know in everyone's treatment paradigm, clinical trials is the first consideration for every type of cancer. Clinical trials has helped us enormously. We know in pediatric cancers or childhood cancers that we generally enroll patients almost 100% on clinical trials that receive treatment as when they're children. And we know we have cured many of those diseases, those childhood cancers, but there's adult um, examples of that too. So a very recent one was a brand new therapy that's kind of moving us in this direction of personalized medicine or understanding the molecular basis of cancer that takes us out of the one treatment for all, but what do I know about your particular cancer that will allow you to be on a special clinical trial so we can target the subgroup or the kind of cancer you have. In breast cancer, we know there was an enormously pivotal trial that was released in 2006, but had been developed many years before that, looking at a monoclonal antibody called trastuzumab or Herceptin. And that, went, that drug was developed very early, so it was found in that early scientific bench discovery, went on to bench success with that agent, then moved into phase one testing, which is really looking at the safety of an agent. From there, it moved into phase two testing, where we really looked at that agent to say, okay, we know the safety profile of this agent. We know the mechanism of action from the bench uh, success that we had. Then it took it to phase two to say, okay, what about the effectiveness in a certain group? And we knew that there were a group of patients who had breast cancer that had a poor prognosis, that had a very particular type of protein that we could identify called HER2. And this drug was particularly effective in that group. So in phase two, test, phase two studies, we found that the drug was extremely effective. Then it went to phase three testing where we compared that therapy against the standard of care. What we knew was the very best treatment for that subgroup of breast cancer. Patients participated in a randomized phase two. That means they were randomly selected to either get the standard of care treatment 
plus this new investigational or to be studied agent versus the standard of care for patients at that time. And we know the results of that trial from that large phase three randomized study was to show us that this drug significantly impacted survival and response rates in that subgroup of patients. So we were then able to bring it to the FDA and that treatment was available for patients right away and has become the new standard of care.